is Brent Townsend with his uh, S19 from Rance. Got the first start up with the uh, propeller on it. It's all complete. He's, uh, he's been visiting uh, Viking aircraft engines in Florida and uh, with his wife and they're now ready to head back home and put the wings on the plane and run it. get to this point. Need some wings, away we go. Congratulations. Congratulations, thank you, John. Appreciate the help. We had a pretty good week here getting all this done. Beautiful design, a lot of engineering. Shows you care about the airplane. Yeah, we're going to let you try out the uh, three-blade sensor ditch, and then we'll try the two-blade, and we'll see, uh, see what you like better. And, uh, really turned out nice, you know? Like, I'm looking at it now, um, everything that you and me talk about and the way we planned it out and the way the engine's laid out, the, um, the shelf that we built for the batteries, um, just, just the whole thing came together really organized and nice. Turned out real nice. Looks like everything is made and fit right there. I'm excited to get the cowl on. Now you're gonna be heading home and uh, doing the cowling on your own. So you're just going to have to send us pictures so we can share it with the uh, other S19 builders on the web. Do. And then we're going to have you fly over to, uh, to Rand's when you get her done. You don't live too far away from him, do you? We live about 280 nautical fair miles from Rand's. Okay. And then Oshkosh um, 2014, you'll be there. we've got we're back to installation and uh, what we did here in the S19 as far as the fuel system we took our fuel pumps and installed them horizontally on the firewall this is the fuel pump assembly from Viking we were able to get two uh, through firewall fittings um, through here that are available in the Viking shopping cart initially we had them lined up a little bit further up um, because uh, that would have given us a straight path into the fuel pumps. Now, we added a heater, so we ended up uh, moving the fuel fittings down a little bit. That allowed us to fit the heater vertically on the firewall. So we have basically four holes in a row. We got heater on top, we got heater here, which used to be for one of the fuel uh, connections. <clears throat> and then we have another fuel connection, and we have uh, one on the bottom there and one is for the feed to the pumps and one is for the return fuel back to the tank from there uh, we have made uh, Some T's and that is because we need to go to fuel pump number one and fuel pump number two and We also provided a service port here where you can 
drain fuel if you need to. We don't necessarily recommend a O-ring type of drain or regular aircraft drain because if it ever were to leak, these fuel pumps would then suck air through this leaky O-ring and they are notorious to leak rather than sucking fuel from the fuel valve and the fuel tanks and you could have a cavitation problem. So we don't do that. Now what we do do and they don't see here is we put a little, we make a, a shroud that goes over this when it's all finished. And then in the cowling edge here, we're going to just put a NACA duct that shoots air onto these pumps into a little little shroud. And it doesn't have to be sealed. It just has an in here and an out over there. So just a, basically a cover over this to duct the cold air over the fuel pumps. And then we're also going to put uh, on the feed end of the pumps, the low pressure side here, going to the pumps, we'll put a little bit of fire sleeve over there to keep them insulated away from the heat in the engine compartment. Now, once we go through the pumps, where we've got here, uh, and by the way, you don't see any filters at the inlets of the pumps. That's because we're going to um, rely on the filters that are in the tanks or the, the strainers that are in the tank. And then we have a high pressure filter after the pumps before it goes into the engine. So fuel will go from the tanks to the six port fuel selector valve by and air inside the airplane. From there it would go through a hose to one of these fittings and that would be the feed to the engine and then one would have a return and that will go back to the fuel valve. Pumps are mounted uh, just directly to the firewall. You can use nut plates if you'd like. Then we have the wiring of the pumps where we have a ground wire going to our grounding bus up here that we provided and showed earlier. From each pump, a separate wire. And then, of course, we have our positive wire to each pump, and that goes to the Viking bus. Very simple. Then, this is what we refer to as our fuel manifold. It is a machine piece. It has the uh, pressure regulator. You don't put a hose on that. You just point it down and leave it. That just vented to atmosphere. And then we have the, here we have a Dynon transducer for fuel pressure. Uh, Viking view would have a slightly different one. It would be screwed in there. And then we have a fitting here, which will be the exit of the, either this pump or that pump, depending on which one is used. And then in the middle is the return from the regulator that brings pressure, uh, fuel back to the fuel tank. And once it goes through here, it is then regulated. Excess fuel is bled off by the regulator and routed back to the tank. The fuel now that goes up here is now under pressure, and it's 43 pounds of pressure. And it can be plus minus uh, three pounds from that. And then this particular builder has a fuel uh, transducer showing uh, fuel flow, and we're trying to keep a nice straight path going into it and a straight path going out of it for it to work properly so you can uh, calculate the number of gallons and as you can see it is in the uh, it is in the uh, high pressure line going directly to the engine and uh, there's not a need for two of them because you're not uh, calculating where the fuel return is. Just the fuel that goes to the engine, which means we only need